सो वेलकम टू लेक्चर नाइन इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन वी हैव लर्न हाउ टू कैरी आउट द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सिमेट्री ऑपरेशन और कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ सिमेट्री ऑपरेशन एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन हाउ टू एक्चुअली फाइंड आउट द कम्प्लीट सेट ऑफ सिमेट्री ऑपरेशन मॉलिक्यूल मे हैव राइट so we have already seen that how to identify or how to find out a complete set what do you mean by complete set of symmetry operations so now let's see what is a point group or symmetry point group because our goal is to find out what is a symmetry point group right symmetry point group so a group of elements so each member of the group is called as element a group of elements or collection of elements in this particular case each element is nothing but symmetry operation symmetry operations so elements are not to be confused with so i will write it as not to be confused with symmetry elements okay so these are group elements which are nothing but symmetry operations okay so group of elements in this case symmetry operations and not to be confused with symmetry elements that are interrelated according to certain rules so what are these rules we will see that so the first rule is called as there are four rules which define which relate the elements and that defines a symmetry point group the first uh, property is or first rule is called as closure and it states the product or in some books it is also written as combination of any two elements and i will again write down that these elements are symmetry operations so the product of any two elements in the group and the square of each element must be an element in the group so this we have already seen using an example of bf3 that uh, if we take list on all the symmetry operations and we take different combinations or square of any element it must form an element in the group it cannot go out of that group so this is called as closure property that it's a closed group it is not infinite i mean there can be infinite symmetry operations but again those symmetry operations within that set must be closed must follow the closure property right also it is not necessary that uh, a b is equal to c and is equal to ba that may or may may not exist so this may be the case that it is actually not equal and ba is equal to d in this case the group should have a b c d in that set okay so the elements uh, c and d must be present if the commutation is not holding so any basically any order of combination uh, must result into an element which forms the part of the group okay uh, there is one particular group called as abelian group group has all members or all elements follow a uh, commutation law commutative 
property we can say so in that case ab is equal to c and uh, that is equal to ba for uh, all the elements of the group so that group is called as abelian group that we will see later so now we can uh, use any particular molecule take any molecule list down all the symmetry operations test for closure property you should be able to do that now right okay second definition is let me go to second page one element in the group one element in the group must commute with all others and leave the element unchanged we will see what it means mathematically the element is designated as identity element so we know that each uh, molecule has the identity element in it right defined as e so we can say that uh, if we take combination of e x x is another element or x e it should give you x back so one element in the group must commute with all other elements that means e is commuting with x in this case and leave the element unchanged so it will result into x so this is easy to show you can take any molecule do a symmetry operations perform identity operation and then do it in reverse order and see if it is equal to just uh, the operation so i will just take one example over here which is i know it is very easy to follow just in case so let's say if i do c3 operation what i will get is i will not uh, go into details but what i will do is 3 1 2 and now if i do e operation i will get same thing back so f2 f3 f1 right so this is the case of c3 e now it is easier to see that this is equal to c3 e and it's equal to c3 right so an element must commute with all other elements and leave the element unchanged okay so again by element when i am saying element i mean symmetry operation not the symmetry element this is the group element we are talking about okay so third property is so first property was closure another is the presence of uh, identity which is always there so symmetry uh, operations do follow the two properties now let's say the third property so third is the associative law of multiplication which in this case is called as combination because you cannot cannot really multiply the symmetry operations you can combine them must hold right so this we have already seen that the uh, symmetry operations do follow the associative law of combination right in the last class we have seen that so this must hold and that holds for symmetry operations so again this can be tested out easily and the fourth is every element must have an inverse and the inverse should also be which is also an element of the group so every element should have an inverse and that inverse should always be present in the group so for example again going back to bf3 example 
we saw that C3 is equal to C3 square inverse. So C3 has an inverse which is C3 square and C3 square is actually present as an independent operation in the group, right? So this property should hold for all the elements. So sigma V1, C2, any operation which is there, it should have an inverse and the inverse should also be an element of the group, okay? So you can take now, take it as a home assignment. using h2o show all the symmetry operations in h2o follow the above four rules Okay, so one by one, you can actually do that and uh, see for yourself whether it is true or not. Okay, okay. so that uh, once the symmetry operations, uh, you have shown that they follow the above rules, these are called as uh, point groups. That particular set of uh, elements is called as symmetry point groups. So why it is called as point group actually? So why point group? is because uh, in all these symmetry operations at least one point in the molecule in space is unchanged so the location of that particular point remains unchanged so that's why it is called as point group at least one point in the molecule in space is unchanged uh, after performing all the symmetry operations. So you can pick up any symmetry operations of the group and by performing any symmetry operations at least one common point should be there which should not change uh, in the molecule and that's why this particular group is called as uh, point group so this is in uh, relation to space groups where the like when we study or if you have actually gone through a course of crystallography where the translational operations are also there so here we have seen that it's only rotation and reflection uh, operations so in crystallographic point groups which are called as space groups we also have uh, something called as translational operations so uh, which is out of the purview of this course but those are called as space groups and these are called as point groups so we will not be discussing space groups in this course we will be only restricting ourselves to point groups but there is more to symmetry basically that's which uh, goes to explain the crystallographic space groups okay so now let's uh, look at next is uh, so now that we have learned what is a point group and how a point group is formed, let's see what are different types of point groups. So uh, the next topic is shown flies, notations of point group. Okay, the name of the, uh, how do you actually give names to different point groups? So let's uh, see what are different point groups. Let us categorize them first and then uh, we will see what are their names and what are the elements required uh, to define one particular point group. So the first in this category is called as non-rotational point group or point groups. These are generally low symmetry. low symmetry groups so number of symmetry elements or symmetry operations are uh, relatively lower so let me point group list down and then the elements of the group and i will also give you a little description and let's see example 
the first in this case is c1 c1 is when you have nothing but just the identity present okay there is no other operation no principal axis no sigma no i no improper axis so molecule having no symmetry basically molecule having no symmetry is called as c1 point so example can be when you have uh, let's say if you have all four atoms of a tetrahedral are different so you can say a b c d right so in this case the only uh, the complete group is just e and we can say that the order of the group is order of the group is the number of symmetry operations present in the group okay order of the group in this case is 1 okay so order is equal to number of symmetry operations non redundant symmetry operations is equal to order which is in this case is 1 okay so next example so non rotational of course because there is no rotation involved in any of this next is cs so in this case you have e and sigma now sigma can be mostly it is like a molecular plane molecule possesses only plane of symmetry as an element so an example uh, you can take is for example here we have br f c l and this will be e and sigma h right and the order will be 2 so this is a c s point group let's go to the next non rotational point group which is called as c i so as it is clear from the name it should have e and i so only inversion center so only inversion center is present example uh, is uh, let's see if i can draw it correctly so it's a staggered fluoro chloro cl f goes into opposite h so if you see i lies in the middle of uh, cc bond and that's the only symmetry element present there is no other plane nothing is present right no rotation axis order again is 2 in this case because the two elements of the group are e and i so this is uh, all for non rotational point group so now let's look at uh, second category which is single axis rotational groups so n of course cannot be 1 because we have seen that if it is 1 it will be c1 uh, c1 point group so n can be 2 3 up to infinity okay so we can say the point group is uh, c n point group the elements are c n and e whereas the operations will be so c n will give rise to uh, n operations so c n 1 c n 2 and then up to c n n minus 1 because c and n will be again e so these are the set of operations so an example is uh, open book structure of uh, h2o2 so the structure looks like this so let's say 
so here my c2 axis is actually perpendicular to the plane of the board and the rotation is right so o will replace with o h will be replaced with h right so this particular group is uh, called as c2 point group so c and basically so the elements uh, group elements will be e and c2 nothing else because c2 square will be again e right okay so that is single axis rotational point group cn uh, another example for cn uh, can include uh, hydrazine hydrazine is n2h4 and the structure you can draw in newman projection let me draw as uh, so if I draw it, let me see if I correctly draw it. H, H, and this is N. And the back N atom is also drawn like this. And then you have H, H. Okay. So here the C2 will be passing through NN bond right so if you do this uh, so i would advise you to actually go to uh, chemtube 3d.com and look at this molecule in 3d so that you can actually see where the symmetry operation lies or where the position of c2 axis is okay so that way it will be easier to see but if you do this so there will be basically uh, c2 which is uh, passing through nn bond and the operation will be like this so this will be your c2 axis so this h goes at the back this h this will be the kind of rotation we are talking about okay uh, let's take one more example for this which is uh, triphenyl phosphine so in this case it is phosphorus atom and then you have three phenyl rings which are uh, oriented like a propeller So, none of these phenyl ring is actually in the plane of the molecule. So, if I draw it uh, more precisely, it's like something like this. Where this bond is actually coming out of the plane of the board and this bond is going be below. Okay. So, it's like something like a propeller blade uh, fan like a thing which is twisted phenyl ring. So, there is no sigma H in this case. Okay. So, here the symmetry axis is like this C3 okay so all of these form CN point groups so next is uh, CNV point group so here a uh, molecule possesses a CN axis and n vertical planes that are collinear with c n axis so the operations will be e c n c n 2 up to c n n minus 1 and we should have n sigma v's okay it can be sigma v1 sigma v2 and so on okay so example we have already discussed these kind of uh, examples so one is water so water has c2 axis and two sigma v's which are uh, collinear with c n axis then similarly nh3 
has a C3 axis and three sigma v's collinear with the C3 axis and so on. So these are C and V point groups, right? So we can also see what is the order of this particular group. So order here is four, for example, and we can work out the order for n is three. Okay. Then next uh, single axis rotational point group is uh, C N H. So here the group elements are, uh, or the symmetry elements are E C N sigma H. This is the least uh, which is required. So molecule should possess at least a C N axis. And of course, it will generate n operations and a horizontal plane perpendicular to CN axis. Okay. So, uh, for example, let's look at B O H. O H everything is in plane. There is a C3 axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the board. So C3 and there is a molecular plane which is sigma H, right? So because C3 and sigma H are present, so there would also be a S3 axis and of course E would be present. So these are the set of symmetry elements and the corresponding symmetry operations will give rise to two and two here right so two c3 e two c3 sigma h and two s3 and so on okay another example you can look in this category is uh, c c h c l h c l so here the elements are e c2 sigma h and because c2 and sigma h are present so there would be s2 which is nothing but i and the operations would include e c2 sigma h i yeah because c2 square will be equal to e only so these are the set of operations so you can say e c2 sigma h and i will be present and then let's also discuss one special group under single axis which is called as C infinity V. So these are basically uh, non centrosymmetric. It is easier to remember like this non centrosymmetric linear molecules. So example is HCl anything linear without having any center of symmetry or let's say we have COS or CSO okay so the elements will be E C infinity we can see that there is a C infinity axis passing through the linear axis of the molecule and infinity sigma v's so infinity sigma v's are all sigma v's which are containing that particular c infinity axis right and we can find out the corresponding operations there will be infinity operations ar arising because of c infinity okay so that's it for today uh, we will next discuss uh, dihedral and cubic point groups and then uh, we will also see a flow chart how to discuss how to actually identify which molecule belongs to which particular point group Okay, so that's it for today. So do practice, look at different uh, molecules, list down symmetry elements and then try to work out if the operations present in that molecule are actually following all four properties of the group or not. Okay, thank you.